Praise the Lord. Good morning. Whew. It's getting cooler and cooler. The seasons have changed. The seasons are changing. And that's how we ought to be. We have we have spring, summer, fall, and winter. The TV has changed. The airplane, the cruise ship, the radio, uh, the air conditioner, uh, uh, the telephone, the walkie-talkie, uh, um, the automobile. A lot of things have changed because of technology and because of time. But why haven't you changed? You've been with that same stupid man doing the same stupid stuff saying and doing the same stupid things and he still hasn't changed he's turning your hair white some gray hair we've earned some gray hair we've been given i know this glitter of life i have i'm grateful for it i have nothing to hide i believe when you d-y-e your hair you denying your existence you denying your education you denying your edification you denying your exaltation all you've been through. I, I, I have nothing to hide. I earned this gray hair. I earned these, this glitter of life. I gave my mom and dad gray hair. So it's only proper that I get gray hair. My son said, Dad, how come you don't dye your hair a little bit? Or at least put a more color in it. I said, you just going to turn it back white. <laughs> life just going to turn it back white. People just going to turn it back white. Uh, health and mental and, and, and social ills and issues just going to turn it back white. I believe when you dye your hair, you, you, you're not accepting your your maturity. I believe when you dye your hair, you are not happy with yourself and you're trying to stay young forever. And you're more concerned about the outside than the inside. This is just what I believe. So I sit here, man, just, just praying and staying and I was talking to Deacon Adam yesterday on the way from uh, Chicago. I call him when I get all, out of the busy part of Chicago, and I always call him around the same part when I get uh, in Skokie, and we talk from Cook to Lake County uh, and beyond. And we were talking, and I was talking to him about how I was praying when I was married about the condition of my marriage, and I was praying, Lord, put love in my marriage. Lord, put respect in my marriage. Lord, uh, uh, let her come home after work. Lord, don't let her stay out all night long. I'm serious with y'all. Lord, don't let her stay gone the whole weekend. Don't let her stay gone, stay out the weekend and come home. Been alley cat. And I don't know what alley she been with in. And I don't know what cat she been with. So he started laughing. I said, yeah, bro. I, said, I was praying that. And I heard the Lord say, get up. And I kept trying to pray. And I had my eyes closed. And also I heard a voice say, get up. And I was squeezing my eyes tight. I was ignoring God. He said, get up. And also my eyes popped open. And I tried to close them. <laughs> they wouldn't close. And I, I tried to stay kneeled in front of the fireplace. I was living over in Zion at the time. I found this beautiful uh, brick home. And I would pray in front of the fireplace. I always wanted a fireplace. My first fireplace. So I was praying, Lord, put love in my marriage. Lord, I mean, put love in our heart. Lord, put respect in my marriage. I was praying these uh, 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 attributes for my own marriage and I heard the Lord say to me get up and when I finally got up enough strength to get up I heard him say in my spirit if she was meant to be with you you wouldn't have to pray these things to be inside of her and I started weeping because I remember my mom used to say don't beg nobody for nothing if you got to beg somebody for something it's not meant for you to have as I leave this alone so just sitting here, just going back down memory lane, praying. Um, these messages, a lot of my life experience, life failures, is not what I'm going through now. Y'all should take these messages uh, for food, not fodder. For food, not for thought. For spiritual food, supernatural food. If I can prevent anyone from going through the hell that I've been through, then that's just a part of my my spiritual obligation to my fellow man and or woman as I leave this alone. So don't beg nobody to change. Don't beg. I don't beg nobody but God. Don't beg nobody to treat you right. If they, if they can't treat you right, guard your heart, guard your mind, take the tears, take the pain, and go on. Start over with somebody else. There's somebody out there just waiting to meet you to love you 
and to treat you the way you're supposed to be treated. You don't treat people the way uh, uh, you want to treat them. You treat people, I uh, how to say, treat people the way you want to be treated. No, you treat people the way they want to be treated. So I was sitting here, man, like, wow, Lord God, thank you for bringing it back to my remembrance. If you got to pray for a person to treat you right, to come home, not to disappear, uh, 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 not to call you everything. In this day and age, y'all keep hearing me say this. People will text you, email you, leave you voicemail messages, and will insult you. And I tell my son, uh, uh, well, I used to tell him, it don't happen to him now. I said, if somebody leave you a nasty message and you're in a relationship with them, or married to them, or whatever the case may be, as soon as you hear that first sound of cussing and disrespect, pull the phone away from your ear, and some of y'all already know what the message is going to be. See it day. Zipsing. Seven. Press seven. Delete the message. And then when you talk to them, they're going to say, you get my message? Yeah, I got your message. Did you listen to it? Just say, I got your message. Don't tell them you deleted it. Because they're going to wonder why you're not responding. Don't listen to no pre-recorded hate. Don't listen to someone put you down that's recorded. It's just like penning, writing, or texting or emailing someone something nasty. You got to spell check and proofread and decide if you want to send that nastiness, horribleness before you send it. As I leave this alone. People don't misspell cuss words. People don't misspell insults. If they do, they, they, that, they really mad. Hmm. As I leave this alone. But if you got to beg somebody to love you, beg somebody to treat you right, beg somebody to stop cussing you out, beg somebody to stop beating you, beg somebody to come home, beg somebody not to sneak away and tip off and lie and stay and disappear. Trust me, y'all, from experience. Run. In the words of a wise little girl, run for us. Run and run for it. Run. God bless you. God keep you. It's my prayer. My mom used to say, if you got to beg somebody to do something or to be a certain way, just maybe, just maybe you're not supposed to be with them. I pray you return. I pray you get up. I pray you find yourself. Let this day be the first day of the rest of your life that's good. Peace.